Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And she's going to drive the computer today. I am. Because we're going to talk about uh, another daily dose of dismal Disney. Mm -hmm. You got to tell me what's going on. Okay. I have no idea what's this going on. This actually came out a few days ago. I just didn't see it till today. But apparently Disney is now challenging the, the government of the UK, the British Parliament, over a potential, you know, draft of a bill they have out um, with like new rules for streaming services, and it mostly protects consumers. And Disney is like, nah, -uh, nah, -uh, because we're gonna have to raise our prices then. What? Yes, and, and apparently there's another another aspect to it that WDW News they put out today that it, there's some um, there's another there's another piece about about the group that oversees like content, and they're gonna have to be beholden to that too. Um, so we're going to talk about that, but before we get into any further. Uh, before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. Guys, you get a woohoo if you do. Woo! Uh, go out to piratesandprincesses.net for more objective Disney news. Clown, I try. Clownfishtv.com for just more, you know, other news. <laughs> I don't know how objective I was, I was in this one, though, to be honest, because I was like, what? So, yeah. So I'll explain to you what's going on. Deadline got this exclusively. It was a few days ago, actually. So Disney is going to raise concerns about new UK laws that require it to send contract renewal notices to Disney Plus users and allow them to quote unquote gain the service without paying. Okay, uh -huh. so here's what it, what it is. They want to pass a bill, okay? And it's in draft now. And it, the bill is about consumers and streaming. They're calling it the Digital Market Competition and Consumer Bill. It's not going to just impact Disney, it impacts streaming services in general. So Netflix and everybody right. else, yeah. Here's what it wants, okay? The new bill, uh, the head wants, well, it's three things. We're going to talk about these two first. Reminder notices are to be sent to customers every six months to ensure they are aware they are subscribed and paying for the service. Okay, okay, okay. So, so you know, hey, a lot of us subscribe to things forget. I, I know I was subscribed to some... Uh, it was like Restream or something like that for like two years until I realized I forgot to. Right. Because they give you like a trial, but they count on that. That's actually part of the business model. They yes. count on you forgetting. And, and then I'll, I'll read what Disney said about this in a minute, but that's the first part, which I, okay. I think they should do over here. The second part, which I kind of see their point, a 14 day period for customers. If they don't want to keep the service. They can withdraw their subscription during that two week period and not pay for the service. Yeah, I don't agree with that because what's going to happen, this is what apparently Disney's arguing, is they're going to subscribe for two weeks, watch all the shows and movies mm -hmm. they want to watch, and then cancel it. Yeah, but Disney, yeah. And I agree, it is a problem. I But Disney's argument for this one is, is funny. So the first one. They're talking about this. I have a deadline here. They're saying about the, the different issues. And they're saying the price hike warning. So Disney had written, their lawyers had written, here they said, to a submission to the Lord's Communications and Digital Committee. They said, the combination of the market imperatives, consumer preferences, our practice of providing timely and clear notice of the recurring fee, and the ease of terminating the agreement should, you know, obviate the need for mandated renewal notices. So their argument is, we always make it, we always let you know before we take the money out of your account that we're charging you for the service. So that should be enough. So wait, <laughs> and they said that they're, 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 wait, they're saying at minimum, the need for the micromanaging of how and when these notices should be sent, which is a serious flaw in the draft bill. It fails to recognize that it could lead to consumer ignoring notices. So, Disney claims that every month they let you know that they're going to bill you before they bill you. Right. But they're mad if they have to tell people every six months, here's a notice to let you know you're still subscribed to us so you know. Because if they send that six-month notice out, the biannual notice, that people are going to get annoyed and they're not going to open, they're, they're going to ignore the notices. But they didn't ignore the notice every month that you send them you're going to bill them. That notice they don't ignore. But the, the twice a year one... You're gonna not. You're gonna complain about. Yeah. Because they might ignore. They might ignore that notice. <laughs> the look you're giving me. That, that's their argument. We we let them know every month that we're billing them and give them plenty of notice, but we don't want to send six every six months more notices. Yeah. No. <laughs> what, what they're doing. So every time somebody gets notified that a payment is going to come out, you're giving them the opportunity to jump ship because what's going to happen is people are going to be like, oh, I've been paying for Disney Plus for. You know, six or eight months now, I already watched my Star Wars show or whatever. Oh, I forgot to cancel that. Thanks right. for reminding me to cancel but that. They, but they but they tell them that every month before yeah. they charge their card. But they're complaining that they're going to ask them to give them two notices a year, you know, remind them they're still subscribed. And they're saying that people, people are, there's too many notices. People are going to ignore it. 
As, but then they say in another, or another breath, they pay, they send notices out every month. Yeah, because they don't. No, I'm I, just saying. I, I know we get charged for Disney Plus. I mean, I could be wrong. There are some subscriptions that we get charged for. They they do send out notice, but I don't think Disney Plus is one of them. I think they just hit you every month. The only time you hear from them is like, oh, hey, you got to change your PayPal info. Oh, hey, you got to change your credit card. Yeah, you know. Yeah, or change your password or something. Yeah. yeah. Right. So that that doesn't make any sense. Why get mad about it if you're yeah. already notifying people? which is questionable, and you're notifying them monthly, which I would argue is more likely to be ignored, then how is adding a couple more notices a year going to change anything? Yeah, this is basically Disney panicking because they count on all these streaming services. They all do. They all count on you subscribing and forgetting because people aren't going to miss 10 or $15 a month. Right. But, you know, if everybody has to give notice, then you're going to start doing the math in your head and be like, oh, yeah, I'm spending like a hundred and some dollars a month on streaming. I don't need. Right. And so, but I'm saying if they were actually giving out the notices two more yeah, a year, it would, wouldn't matter. So the second part is the, the, the part about gaming the system. Now, I do agree with them to a point on this because you're right. People are going to use it, watch what they want to watch yes. and cancel it. And this isn't just... Disney, this is the Netflix and everybody else too. It's going to be the same thing for that. Well, okay. So uh, business, business hat, putting the business hat on here. Technically what you could do is have like a, a uh, holding, like after 14 days you get, you know, when you become like a real, when you become a real member, then you can watch. You know, yeah, but shows. I don't know if they'll allow them to do that. They'll be like, well, you're, you're, you're withholding. You know, hold- yes. Yeah. So I don't know if that's something they can do, but it's just funny because they said that, um, this would allow the bad actors to benefit from our service without compensation. Yes. To the determinant of the vast majority of good actors, it could likely result in a price increase given the, the reduction in subscriber base and the high cost of producing high quality content. So basically, is Disney doesn't want it because they're getting screwed. And it's only okay when Disney's screwing you. Yes. It doesn't work in reverse. Right. I love this. Nobody likes to be reverse screwed except for some people. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. I love this though. Wait. The price increase because you're, you're, so your answer is going to be you're going to charge the people that actually pay you more money for the ones that take advantage of this two week this two week issue loophole, and I'm like, but you already ri- raise you already raise the prices on people that are paying you all the damn time since they got Hulu with live TV and, and the Disney took control the price has doubled in a couple of years like three years yeah. and the price has doubled all right it's not like eighty bucks a month. Because they keep jacking the rates. They're jacking up Disney Plus. Now you have to pay with that, you know, ad free and regular and all that. And they said that even then they're gonna raise it again in a, like by the end of the year. So they're raising it on people anyway. So what difference does that effing make if these people only get two weeks and quit? Because you're raising the prices re- you know, regardless of that. Yeah. So I'm like, that argument's stupid. I mean, I get what you're saying, and I think that the two-week thing is is you're right. That's not gonna that's not gonna fly with a lot of reasons. But the argument that we have to charge people more for it. You already are. Yeah. And then for this argument, because you're making more, you know, producing high quality content. Where is it? Because you have to pull down <laughs> shows <laughs> to write down. Where is it? Your Marvel and Star Wars ho- shows have sucked as of late. Your what yeah. Secret Invasion, that everybody's already complaining about how bad it is. Yeah. You, their shows have not been good. You're not producing as many shows because that was one of your cuts was you're not going to make as many shows, but you're going to make better quality shows. So we already know you aren't producing that many shows. And you have the writer strikes. So everything's pushed back anyway. But no, you're, you're going to have to raise the price on people because um, they have to pay for your high quality shows and the amount that you're producing that you said you cut. Um, so which is it? And there's a bunch of there's a bunch of, of stories I'm hearing from Disney and their arguments, but their arguments are invalid in the fact that they're saying one thing but acting in another way. Yeah, I, I, this is fine because what what's going to happen is don't don't you make us don't you make us use more AI. No, they're, they're going to be like, don't you make us raise the price? You're going to anyway. You're going to anyway. Actually, Disney should be like, oh yes, now we have a good reason. Well, because they know what's going to happen. What is going to happen? Yeah, people are going to nope out. They're they're going to watch what they want to watch, and that's going to be it. But then they're going to raise the price and they're going to lose more customers because, frankly, at this point, there's not much, unless you're a Marvel or Star Wars fan of all the Disney, Marvel, and Star Wars stuff, there's nothing really worth paying for on Disney+. Plus. They're pulling content off. Right. And, they're, and so they take write downs. And they're also, yeah, selling it off to, like, Roku and Tubi and stuff like that to use. And they promised, like, the, all the, the vault and stuff, and they're taking that off. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, it, it, there's some sh- good shows on there, but they, they also know that people could watch all the good stuff in two weeks and cancel, which is yeah. what, what's that tell you? Well, they used to do this with, uh, I remember the Disney Channel when we were kids. They used to give you, back, back in the day, believe it or not, 
when Disney Channel first started, it was a premium service like HBO. You had to pay for Disney Channel. And they would usually give you like a free weekend or something. Yes. They would put in the newspaper, hey, you get free Disney Channel. But they were very choosy about what they put on that free weekend. Like you got a good taste of it, but you didn't get the really good stuff. Mm -hmm. You get Tron and Pete's Dragon and then the, whatever shows they have. But like the really good stuff, yeah, you're going to have to pay for it. Yeah, they'd schedule it on purpose. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So is this enough to get people interested? So, yeah, that's what their argument is. And I get the two-week you don't have to pay anything thing is kind of crap. Because some places like Netflix would release all of Stranger Things in one chunk. Yep. And people could just, just you know subscribe for those two weeks, unsubscribe, and then not to pay a penny for it. So I don't disagree with them in that regard. But Disney's arguments for why are kind of funny. I, I know what they're going to do. This is going to be the next step. They're going to they're going to do Disney Plus Plus. And Disney Plus Plus is going to be you get basic Disney Plus, but if you want the latest shows as we air them, you're going to have to pay an extra 5 or 10 dollars a month. Like You've been they, saying that for a while. They, that, that's the only way to go. You basically have to get more blood out of the same number of right. rocks. Which is funny because that's what they're saying. They do this all the time. Their theme parks are a prime example. People weren't going because it was too expensive, so they just blood those people dry even more. And now they're trying to argue that, oh, you know, if, if people are going to, you know, pull within two weeks, then we're going to have to charge the ones who pay more. Yeah. You're going to anyway. Yeah. For the same argument. You'll make the same argument. So um, that's part of it. Then there's another part that was interesting, WDW News Today brought up, um, was that there's a third element that they don't like. They said they're forcing content creators, which be streamers, to approach sensitive social and political topics with objectivity <laughs> and impartiality. <laughs> there it is. But this is not just that. This is also because of the BBC. Yeah. They said that uh, Disney Plus, Netflix, Max are going to all be under Ofcom, the United Kingdom's media regulator. And according to a press release from the Department of Culture, Media, and Sport, the new content code seeks to protect audiences from a wider range of harmful material, such as misleading health claims. Don't go to Twitter. Vaccine misinformation, everybody. Yeah, That's yeah. what they're trying to protect you from. So now, the, I, I think part of it's that, and part of it's because BBC, if you have streamer services come in, they said a lot of their younger audiences don't watch BBC and stuff. Yeah. They go to the streaming services. I guess we do. But I'm just saying BBC is their publicly funded, you know, and the BBC is all, but the BBC is always super far left. It, it, well, yeah, it never used to be, but recently, yeah. So it, how is that falling under this whole idea that, that, you know, you're trying to keep it, you know, political well, topics and objectivity and okay, partiality? So what, and this isn't just Disney, because we know Disney's pretty far left anyway, right? This is all about nerfing alternative news sources, news outlets. Because if you have like a streaming service that has like Newsmax or something on it, you know, they want to make sure that you're not, you're not spreading uh, messages that are contrary to what the approved script is. Remember when uh, the, the pandemic first started, YouTube would not even allow you to mention COVID-19. No, yeah, you wouldn't. That's why you like weren't even allowed proof. to mention it. Like it didn't exist or they would immediately demonetize your video. Because uh -huh. apparently it was racist and misinformation to acknowledge that there was this disease that would right. eventually and shut the world down. And you weren't allowed to question vaccination or anything no. like that because if you did, then you would be in trouble or you'd be you know, kicked off of platforms. Yes, there absolutely. was me outlets, like news outlets that got kicked off of Twitter because they questioned like the effects women were having from the vaccine. I, being one of those women, had issues. And they, they were bringing it up and then they got removed for misinformation. And now you're finding out that a lot of the misinformation was actually information. Yeah, weirdly enough, we're finding out a lot of conspiracy theories are turning out to be true. But that's a whole nother... But you weren't allowed to say anything. You're you were censored say anything. from saying anything right. because the, the powers that be didn't want you to say anything. So what they're afraid of, and this is I'm kind of seeing this with YouTube too, what they're afraid of is people are going to go to, to alternate news outlets, you know... Um, but, but I think they, YouTube's walking that back because they were losing money. They are. Now, this is this is just my personal opinion, and I've seen you know different different takes on this. My personal opinion is that uh, I have seen less censorship on YouTube lately, and I think it's because there's an increased number of competitors, you know, Rumble and Kick and all these other new, out, you know, popping up, and they also need ad revenue, which is why they're dropping the threshold from 1,000 subscribers down to 500 subscribers. I think that's all because they're desperate for ad revenue, so they're going to let anybody post whatever, 
you know, they might not promote your content, but they're not going to ban it either. And they're, they're not, not going to demonetize it. I mean, unless it you do you're something really egregious in what you Really do. egregious, yeah. Maybe. So, yeah. So these are the three things that they're basically wanting to do. Um, and Disney, of course, is challenging them because, again, it's completely fine when Disney screws you. Right. But you are not allowed to screw Disney. So Mickey can take you from behind. Right. Mickey can peg you. Right. But you can't, you can't peg Mickey. No. Okay. He's always the he's always the top. <laughs> Mickey's always the top. <laughs> so I'm just saying. You're just Mickey's bitch. Deal with it. And and they're gonna go with their lawyers into the the, the government of the UK to fight it because I mean the, the second one of the 14 days I I do think that they have a point there. Yeah. Um. I just find it funny because what they're mad about was because they're quality content and it's like no not really but like places like Netflix and you know Max and stuff like that are gonna have the same issues. I, I, I do think they have a point on that one. But the first one where it was about, you know, oh, notices. I'm like, but if you're already sending notices, what difference does it make to send two more notices other than you have to hire someone to you know, put it together and send it? Yeah. It doesn't make any difference. Well, There's no reason to argue that unless it, you're trying to trick people. Right. If it's like an official communication, like official government notice, did you know? Did you know you're still subscribed to Disney Plus? And a lot, I'm telling you, a lot well, of people... Well, it's their notice they have to send out. They're required to send Yeah, that probably has a like required notice mm -hmm. or something. And then people... Like I said, every time you remind somebody they are subscribed to a service, that is a chance for them to jump off. Well, there's been studies on this. They have people, guest speakers come to these, these corporations and be like, yeah, well, you know, you can... They'll forget and you can make more money. AOL existed for years beyond its, its intended shelf life because so many old people subscribed to AOL and then they forgot. So they were collecting $10, $15 a month fees from people that weren't even using the service anymore years after the fact. Mm -hmm. There are people that were dead that were still getting somehow billed for AOL and that's how they, they lasted as long as they did. And they also got in trouble though, didn't they? They got in trouble for it. I'm, I'm pretty sure they got in trouble for it. But yeah, like... That's the thing. People forget. They subscribe to streamers and they forget. We, I've done it with Amazon. They'll give you like a free trial. Like, oh, hey, subscribe to this thing for like $3 a month. And then you realize like, oh, we're still paying for that. Whatever. After you spent $300. Yeah. yeah. After, <laughs> after you spent like 300 like, oh my God, I've been paying for this for like six years now. Right. It adds up times how many millions of people. There's even They even have like apps and stuff out there now that track everything that comes out of your card to alert yeah. you yep. so that you know that you're, that you're subscribed to a service that you can actually click a button and unsubscribe. And while Disney says they make it really quick, easy to unsubscribe, which I don't know, I never have, so I'm, I'm assuming they do, um, you know, then that might be the case. Like, it's easier to unsubscribe than it is to subscribe. And that might be the case. But um, if you are notifying people that you're taking some money out of their bank account, then I don't see what two other notifications matter. If they're not ignoring the 12 notifications a year uh, about the, you know, then what difference is two more uh, a year to sort of remind people they're still yeah. subscribed? How, how's that going to hurt anything? Yeah. And, but, well, unless it's like they have to mail it to their house or something like that. Maybe well, that, 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 that going to cost money. Yeah. You have to probably email and mail it or something. At I don't your know. Your expense, it might be at your expense. You got to mail out a written, you know, whatever. Because some people, you know, stuff gets spam away or whatever. Right. I, I think they're just afraid that any anything like this is going to give people an opportunity to nope out. Right. And and and, pe and, and they're already their numbers are already dropping. So yeah. why are they freaking out? Well, their numbers are already in decline, as we've seen with earnings calls. And they're trying everything they can with these gimmicky things, you know, subscribe for $2 a month and all this stuff for six months and things like that, trying to get their numbers up before the next, you know, the next quarter ends, which is the end of year at this mm -hmm. point. Because, no, no, not yet. Next month, starting next month. Yeah, Disney's Disney's begins in October. Yeah, so you October, have July, yeah. August. So the end of this month is the third quarter. Yeah, and they need the numbers up for the earnings call. But come the next quarter, it's the end of the year, and that's what they really look at. So they're trying everything to get those numbers up, um, and they're going to raise prices on things again. But they any anything that's going to take those numbers down, or people might you know be reminded to cancel, mm -hmm. they're going to be against. Oh, absolutely. And it's not just Disney. I mean, I, I guarantee you that Netflix is going to have a fit. But the thing is, Disney, I think, is in a – I'm going to be honest. I think they're in a worse position because they really have to cut back on their content spend and everything else is down too. Their movies are down. And uh, they, they flat said they have to rein it in on the spending on Disney Plus. And if, if they're down subscribers too, every time they go down subscribers, you, you see them take a hit in the stock price mm -hmm. too. Because basically, you know, the last couple of years, investors have been trained to look at their Disney Plus numbers to gauge how the company's right, going. Right, and those numbers. And then we have that lawsuit that, that I guess they gave another notice to Disney about moving ahead with the, the class action suit. Yeah. 
the cause of Chapek and them saying that they were deliberately misleading investors on their mm-hmm. Disney Plus. It's, so it's going to be Disney. It's gonna, they're going to die death by a thousand cuts. I mean, there's there's no they already way. are. There's no way to avoid it. I Secret mean, Invasion's doing shit, and yeah. the, and you know the Marvel movies have been coming out doing bad. Their Pixar movies are doing bad. Their Disney animation movies are doing bad. You know the theme parks, and people are starting to get tired of that. Now we have the writer strike, so all these, you know, they were counting on like Secret Wars and all, and all stuff is going to get pushed back indefinitely. Mm-hmm. You know, and people aren't paying for the shit they got, so it's like I don't, I don't know, guys. I don't know. Apple's looking pretty good. I don't Tim know. Cook, Tim Cook comes along, and says, "Hey, hey." Hey there, Bob. How's it going? He would, because he's up their ass, you know, more than Mickey Whoa. is up yours, you know? You know, with them getting that money. Apple's I guess that's one you. way to get in there and get in your pocket. Yeah, Apple's going to peg Mickey. That's right. All right. Uh, Mickey kind of deserves it at this point. So anyway, <laughs> we're going to wrap this up. Uh, yeah, I think we're going to wrap it up. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye. Help support the channel. Go to thereef.support and get early access to podcasts, videos, and other content. That's the reef.support.